Hi students, welcome back. Let's do question 6 here. Yeah? Question 6 is similar to question 5 and question 4. Alright, it says find the range of values of P. So again, we are looking for range of values of P. You know the moment you see this question, range of values of P, you will know that the answer should be in this form. The answer should be P is bigger than something, could be P is smaller than something, could be P is in between of something and something. The, question, the answer would be something like this because it says range. P has a range, okay? All right, so now let's continue. Um, I, I just want you to be able to think about it, you know, when you look at the question. Don't just uh, read the question without thinking, you know, and all that. Right, let's move on. It says find the range of values of P for the quadratic function. Let's write it down. Fx is equals to Px squared plus 2P plus 4X plus P plus 8. And this particular quadratic function does not intersect the x-axis. That's according to the question. Does not intersect the x-axis. So what does that mean? The moment you you see this does not intersect the x-axis, uh, touches the x-axis at one point, uh, intersects the x-axis at two different points. When you see this, you immediately have to think about the discriminant. That's the first thing you must know. Discriminant b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant if it does not intersect the x-axis means it will be less than zero so now you're looking for range of values of p so if you were to extract the a the b and the c from your quadratic function and put it inside b square minus 4ac less than zero you would have found the range of values of p can you understand the flow of logical thinking in this case okay so now let's put in one by one. Now the question is fairly easy. The reason is because the quadratic equation, or sorry, the quadratic function has been arranged very nicely for you <laughs> in the general form. So look here, this is A and this is already the B, you know, whatever that is attached to the X and whatever that is uh, does not have an X or X square to it. So that's your A, your B and your C. So you don't have to rearrange the quadratic function. That's pretty nice of them to give you such a simple question so <laughs> so uh, let's put it in now b square so this is your b yeah so 2p plus 4 square minus 4 so please remember that the b the entire b 2p plus 4 has to be squared yeah okay minus 4 a is p and c is p plus 8 less than 0 so now, solve all these things, you will be able to find P is between something to something or bigger than something. Okay, now, expand this carefully. 4P squared plus 16P plus 16. That's minus. So negative 4P times P is negative 4P squared. This is negative 4P here, negative 4P times 8. That's negative 32P less than 0. Okay, so it's very easy now. 4p square, 4p square, no more. 16p, there, so that's negative 16p plus 16 less than 0. Okay, so now you do this, the, this, this as if it is an equation, yeah? Just do it as if it is an equation. Shift the 16 over because you want to isolate the p. So that's negative 16. And here is the important thing. Remember I told you about this in question 5, yeah? In question 5, I've explained to you. When you shift the negative 16 over, it becomes negative 16 divided by negative 16, right? And when you shift a negative over, uh, when, when you shift a negative over that has to do with divide and times, you must inverse the sign. So you've got to inverse this sign. So it becomes bigger than. So now, P is bigger than 1. Right, now, surprisingly, yeah, when I say this, a lot of students, they remember they learned this in Form 3, but a lot of students actually do not understand why. Do you know why you have to inverse the sign when you move a negative over? That has to do with times or divide. Yeah, when you times a negative or divide with a negative, you've got to inverse the sign. Okay, let me explain to you why. Yeah? Let's, um, let's take an example. Let's say 2 is smaller than 5, right? Everybody agrees this is so. Now, what happens if I were to multiply both sides with a negative? Multiply both sides with a negative. So now you get negative 2 and negative 5 here. So what happens now? Is negative 2 still smaller than negative 5? It is no longer, right? Negative 2 is now bigger than negative 5. So can you see now why you have to inverse the sign? Simply because when a number is smaller than uh, another number, the value is smaller. But when you multiply it with a negative, when it becomes a negative, the smaller number is actually bigger than the 
bigger number. 2, is, negative 2 is actually bigger than negative 5. Right? So that is why you've got to inverse the sign when you multiply or divide an inequality with a negative. Please remember that. Okay? The logic is this. So I will see you in the next video for question 7 and question 8.